Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Happy Monday, y'all. I'm so excited to see you guys. So we are back with another, um, not just scripture, but lesson plan today. So today's lesson plan, oh, hold on, y'all. I lost my page. Give me just a second. My little lesson plan book don't like to stay open, y'all. That'd be the devil trying to shove it, okay? So today's lesson plan is who am I, okay? Who am I? So um, before we get started, I want to start with prayer. And I want to um, talk to y'all for a little second, give y'all some props. And then we can get into today's word. So, um... Before I get started with prayer, I want y'all to pull up today's scripture. So, it's Matthew 16, and we're going to be reading 13 through 20. Not that many verses. It's not going to take very long. So, pull them Bibles out if you can. It's Matthew 16 and verses 13 through 20. So, in my Bible, this is located on page 1,329. 1,329, okay, y'all? And put this in y'all notes. Today's lesson plan is titled, Who Am I? Who Am I? Okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get uh, started with prayer. I hope to hear a lot of amens when you get to Matthew 16, 13, and we'll be reading up until verse 20. Dear Lord, thank you so much for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day. Thank you for providing us this platform to come to each day and partake in your word and just sit and commune in your presence. Thank you for gracing us with your presence each morning and allowing us the opportunity to come here and to grow as a fellowship. Dear Lord, I ask that you allow these videos to get out there and to touch others, even those who may not know you. Allow them to see the video and continue to join us here each day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. Okay, y'all. So, like I said, it's Matthew 16, 13 through 20. Um, so before we get started, I want to give y'all y'all props. Do y'all realize if you've been attending all of the videos that, um, I just realized that, thank you, Lord. He just, um, put the thought in my head that if y'all have been attending all the videos that we have made it through, let's see here. We are on our 11th lesson plan y'all and we don't even do these every day y'all know that we we read the word sometimes a little bit more you know we get into the bible more than we get into these lesson plans we are at 11 lesson plans today makes 11 clap for yourself okay pat yourself on the back come on okay we gotta give ourselves props we we gotta encourage ourselves in Christ, okay? So you give yourself props that you've been attending and you've been reading the word. And we are on lesson eleven, y'all. I'm proud of y'all. So keep coming, bring a friend, share the video, okay? So today's lesson, like I said, is who am I? Who am I? Put that in y'all notes. And we in Matthew 16, 13 through 20. So I'm gonna um, read the opening and then I'm gonna read today's scripture. Perhaps you have been a Christian all of your life. Your parents have taken you to Sabbath school and church regularly. You know uh, many memory verses and Bible songs. I think that's a, a, I think that's a typo, y'all. Y'all know many Bible verses and Bible songs. You love Jesus very much. But now someone is asking you, why you believe Jesus is the son of God. How will you answer? Jesus asked his disciples a similar question. How do you think they answered? So that's why I wanted to read this before I read the word, okay? Because I want y'all to be thinking about this because we're going to hear how they answer when we read the word, okay? So I want y'all to think about this. I'm going to read the question again. Someone is asking you, why you believe Jesus is the Son of God, how will you answer? And Jesus also asked his disciples a similar question. And how do you think they will answer? Okay? So let's get into this word. 
So like I said, Matthew 16, 13, and it says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter, and if y'all don't know, it's because the Lord um, changed people's names. You know, um, Jesus changed people's names. When you, when you become new in Christ, y'all, I had to pause for a second. When you become new in Christ, he makes you a new person. So he might provide you a new name. So, you know, the closer you get to God, be listening. You might get a new name, honey. You might get a new name, okay? So I'm going to back up a little bit. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That's why I told y'all, listen, y'all, the Lord might reveal it to you. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shalt be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ okay so I hope that provided a little clarity for you when I was talking about the Lord will change your name so be listening y'all because they say and Simon Peter answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and then they say and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. That man's name was Simon. He changed his name. It don't say Simon and Peter said. It says Simon Peter said. So you know that they're referring to Peter whose name once was Simon. Okay, y'all? The Lord will change you. All right, let's get into this lesson plan. It was all the fault of those lousy spies, Peter thought grumbling to himself as he stomped along the road. Every single time Jesus was in Galilee, the Sanhedrin, if I'm saying that correctly, sent spies around to make his life miserable. So here they were, traveling again, heading for Caesarea Philippi, just another few times, excuse me, just another few miles to walk. Peter's feet hurt. It was a good thing they were almost there. Ah, Andrew breath. It looks like the master is going to rest for a while. About time, Peter mumbled. Jesus had turned off the dusty road and was leading the way through a grassy field to some shade trees beside the stream. It would feel good to sit down, Peter thought, have a drink, and maybe even wash his feet. Jesus knelt down and unfastened his sandals. My idea exactly, Peter thought. Jesus grinned up at him, almost as if he could read Peter's mind. Peter grinned back. He loved the fact that sometimes the master seemed to know just what he was thinking. Well, usually he loved it. Sometimes it could be downright embarrassing. Peter removed his sandals too. He walked into the stream and stood beside Jesus, the cool water felt wonderful. Come on in, Andrew, he called over his shoulder. I'm too old to go waiting. Andrew called back from where he was sitting, leaning against a tree, his eyes shut. Peter looked at his brother, a mischievous twinkle in his eye. He scooped up a double handful of water 
and tiptoed across the grass. He dumped the water on the top of Andrew's head. Andrew's eyes popped open. He sputtered for a minute and wiped his face on his sleeve. Then he chuckled. That actually felt quite good, he said. Thank you very much. Jesus walked back through the grass to where the disciples sat in the shade. He sat down too and then stretched out full length on the ground and looked up at the sky. It was bright summer blue. Suddenly, he asked a question. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Well, Thomas began, I have heard people calling you John the Baptist. And I've heard people say, you are Elijah, John put in. Jeremiah, Matthew said. Some folks think you are Jeremiah. James cleared his throat. <clears throat> and some say, you are one of the other prophets. Jesus sighed. All those answers showed that people believed him to be a great man. But they had failed to recognize that he was truly God, Jesus turned his head and looked at his friends. Who do you say I am? The disciples looked at one another. Then somehow they found themselves all looking at Peter. He could be the speaker. So Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus propped himself up on one elbow and smiled at Peter. You are blessed, he said, because my Father in Heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Then Jesus went on to explain to his friends how this understanding was the very key to the Kingdom of Heaven. Jesus gazed into the distance. There was still so much to teach these men, his best friends here on earth. They didn't understand yet what was going to happen. He would tell them plainly. He would spell it out. He had to go to Jerusalem, and there he would suffer at the hands of the leaders and the priests and the teachers of the law. He would be hung on a cross, the worst kind of death, and he would raise again on the third day. Jesus was silent a moment more, enjoying the sharp song of a bird from a nearby bush. Then he began to talk. All right, guys. So that was the end of today's story. So maybe uh, next week's, well, not next week's, but um, the next um, lesson plan we do will give us more info about what Jesus began to say when it says um, when the story ends with he began to talk now um, your homework if you if you want to study a little more is to go back in and at least read verses 21 through um, 28 the last couple verses of that chapter because it tell you a little bit about what he was saying Come on, y'all. Broaden y'all horizons. Read a little bit more. Okay? So let's talk about um, the power text this week and some things to think about. And then we'll get into prayers for this week, and I'll close with prayer, okay? So the power text. This is Philippians 2, 10, and 11. And this is the NIV version. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord I'm gonna read it again y'all because it felt so good coming up off the tongue you hear me at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord okay so just be thinking about that this week. That's Philippians 2, 10, and 11. That's the NIV version. So if you have a different version, like mine is the King James version, it might um, be worded a little different. But it say the same thing. Okay, y'all? It say the exact same thing. All right? 
All right, so let's talk about some things to think about. Okay, so if Peter was able to answer correctly that Jesus is the son of the living God, why do you think he denied Jesus three times during his trial? Now, if you're not familiar, to get some context, or if it's been a while since, you know, you read that part of the Bible, hop over to Matthew 26, 69 through 75, and that'll tell you what happened, okay? So I'm going to read um, the thought again. If Peter was able to answer correctly that Jesus is the son of the living God, why do you think he denied Jesus three times during his trial? And that's located in Matthew 26, 69 through 75. Okay, y'all? All right. Let's see here. Ask at least three people how they would describe who Jesus is. Make notes of the answers and then think about what makes them similar and what makes them different. What would you say is the most accurate way to say who Jesus is? When and how did you come to recognize Jesus as your Lord? When and how did you come to recognize Jesus as your Lord? Okay, let's think about many people, um, how many people today worship professional sports teams and, um, you know, uh, professional like singers and dancers and stuff like that. Think about how people conduct themselves at those events, especially sporting events. What kinds of things do they do to show their support for their favorite team? And should any of these things be used to worship God? So, for example, um, if you're at, let's say, um, um, so here would be the Baltimore Ravens, right? We in Baltimore. So... Um, you at a game, and um, I don't know if y'all ever been to, like, um, I know they got them at, like, baseball games. I've never been to a professional football game. So, I know at the baseball games, you got the little one-finger thing. <laughs> if y'all ever seen it, I used to love those. So, um, that's a way they show support for their team and stuff. Like, or, um, like, a lot of Ravens fans, if you live in Baltimore or Maryland, period, you know, a lot of Ravens fans, they got the stickers on their car. We got something called Purple Tuesday. Everybody all over Maryland is wearing purple on this Tuesday. You hear me? So, in these different ways that we see people show support to these teams, are they appropriate to translate over to supporting Jesus and God? Can you use these same techniques to show your support and worship of God is what it's asking all right so we're going to take a second and pretend that we are one of Jesus's disciples and in our Bible study journal we're going to write an entry describing the events referred to in the scripture we read today which was Matthew 13 through 20 Describe what you think or feel. So you're going to put on your disciple shoes today, y'all. You're either going to become Peter himself or maybe Matthew um, or someone else. You know, one of the disciples, right? And you're going to put their shoes on. You're going to live in their shoes for a second. And you're going to write an entry in our Bible study um you know notes or whatever but you're going to make it like it's a journal entry and you're going to write about what you think or feel is going on right now as if you were living in the Matthew 16 13 through 20 okay the scripture we write today all right we're going to reflect and think about what in our life today may be interfering with our worship of Jesus. What in our life today may be interfering with um, our worship of Jesus? And I just want to intercede right now in the name of Jesus and pray for anybody 
who may be having any thing that's interfering with their relationship with God and I ask that the Lord point that out to them and help them to remove that from their life so that they can go close grow closer to him in Jesus name amen okay let's see here we're going to think of someone who needs to know that Jesus is Lord and share that news with them. We're going to think of someone who needs to know that Jesus is Lord and we're going to share that news with them. Now, we're not going to boast when we share it, y'all. We're going to share it with love. That's how Christ won us and that's how he's going to win them, okay? We're going to share it with love. All right. We're going to head over to uh, 2 Peter. And read 318 and list three ways that you can worship worship Jesus in the next 24 hours. Let's be creative and um, try to perform all three of these acts of worship um, in the next 24 hours. So we're going to go over to 2 Peter, read 318. And we're going to write down in our um, Bible study journals three ways that we can worship worship Jesus in the next 24 hours and of course we're going to be creative and we're going to try to perform all three of those ways okay we're going to go for a walk today or as you're walking throughout your day a lot of us adults are busy um, as you're walking throughout your day today look at all the ways nature tells us that Jesus is creator is the Lord okay let's look at all the ways that the Lord shows his glory throughout today as we just go about our normal day as you walking down the street as you going to work okay just look out your window for just a millisecond and just enjoy and see all the wonderful things he provides us okay so um, this may be for our younger folks or it could be a family night um, type of thing we're going to act out the story we read today with our family um, or friends. So if it's the younger crowd, you and your friends can act it out. But this could be a family night, fun night thing. And you guys are going to act out the story we read today with our family or friends. We're going to, of course, sing or listen to our favorite praise song, which I'll be doing today. I love to listen to praise music, y'all. And we are going to, of course, try to memorize that power text, which was at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's this week's power text, okay? All right. So let's get into this week's prayers. So we're going to ask Jesus to help us dedicate or rededicate our life to him we're going to ask jesus to help us dedicate or rededicate our life to him we're going to thank jesus for being who he is amen we are going to thank jesus for being who he is we're going to pray that our worship to god is in a way that pleases him we're going to pray that our worship to god is in a way that pleases him we're going to ask Jesus to help us put away anything that is keeping him from being number one in our lives. We're going to ask Jesus to help us put away anything that is keeping him from being number one in our lives. Okay? We're going to commit our lives to worshiping Jesus as our Lord. Okay, we're going to commit our lives to worshiping Jesus as our Lord. We're going to pray that Jesus will make us ready to bow down before him. Okay, just like the power text says. So we're going to pray that Jesus will make us ready to bow down before him. Okay? All right. So that's the end of today's lesson, and I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it very much, and I can't wait until our next one. So remember, a scripture a day helps keep that devil away. I hope to see you guys here tomorrow. Bring a friend, share the video, like, subscribe, 
keep joining us here we need to grow our fellowship y'all i'm gonna keep coming back and um praying with y'all reading the word please continue to spread these videos everybody needs to read the word i'm not a pastor or i don't claim to be a prophet or anything of that nature i know for a fact that we are supposed to be reading the word i know for a fact that we're supposed to be fellowshipping so how about i kill two birds with one stone and i get myself reading the word and fellowshipping with others easily by posting videos so y'all can do the same i'm not nobody special you can pick up your phone and do the exact same thing okay i encourage you to do so it'll help you grow your relationship with the lord okay so i'm gonna go ahead and close with prayer and i hope to see y'all tomorrow dear lord thank you so much for bringing us here again another day um, for another word another lesson plan thank you for providing us these tools to grow closer to you thank you again for pro for providing us this platform to fellowship and commune in your presence thank you for gracing us with your presence thank you for all the many things that we do not thank you for or appreciate on a daily basis such as our eyesight the fact that we can walk and talk the fact that we have vehicles and jobs and families and friends thank you lord for all of these many things the fact that we have trees to provide us oxygen to breathe thank you lord so i ask that you continue to grace us with the many things that help us to be who we are and to continue to live how we do and i ask that you continue to push us to get into the word and continue to remind us to keep you as number one in our lives and continue to spread these videos to those who may not know you in jesus name i pray amen amen all right y'all thank you again for coming i love y'all so much and i'll see you tomorrow bye